Okay. I'm assuming everybody wouldn't even have to drive by that place to know what it looks like. I mean, I've been looking at that spot for years. <laughs> so, are you guys the owners, or the? I'm the owner. Do you own? Oh, you own the, But did you just recently buy it? I bought it in September. Yeah. Uh, staff report. Or do we? No, we have nothing. Well, there's no staff That's report. Straight. Well, we have pictures. You want to go? It was just a brief introduction. Why don't you go ahead, Sean Gallegos. Okay, and you are? Uh, yes, hi. My name is Sean Gallegos, assistant planner in the planning division. Uh, the project before you today is indicated in the staff report is a two-story multifamily residential townhouse uh, building with three units. Uh, the intent of the study session is for the commission to provide preliminary feedback to the applicant uh, regarding the architectural design and site planning for the project at 517 Tyndall. Uh, no action will uh, occur tonight. Uh, the next step after uh, the commission provides their comments to the applicant is uh, the applicant will submit a formal application, and at that time they will return uh, to the commission uh, for formal review and action. And at that time it will provide uh, members of the public, and I don't believe there are any here, but if there were, it would provide them an opportunity to come back and to speak to the commission. Uh, this concludes staff's presentation. Unless there are any questions. Thank you. Okay. Well, I did have one question. I don't know whether to ask you guys or the property owner. There look like there are two or three um, or two other buildings that look similar to this. Do you guys know if that's true? The one in front of it and the one like next door or two doors down, they look like the same layout, the same. You mean look similar to the To, to the what's being proposed. Uh, yeah. I didn't notice. Uh, I, I, I know uh, that property directly adjacent to it is a similar uh, design, um, not similar architecture, but similar layout. Yeah. Uh, and then there are other properties in the area that are similar also. Yeah, okay. I just curious. Well, um, at this point, we want to hear from the applicant. Or, I mean, that would seem to make sense, right? Hi, my name is Walter Chapman. I'm the designer for this project. The property owner is here as well. Uh, Les Poltrack, if you have any questions for him. Um, basically, to address uh, Commissioner, I can't sure how to pronounce your name, Mike. Commissioner. Uh, there, there are other three unit projects that are built on Tyndall and some of the adjoining streets, and this is typical with these narrow lots that you can only get three units in, where some of the lots are double wide or mm -hmm. two purchases that have right. been merged. Right. So what we've ended up doing here is um, we have the front unit on Tyndall with an attached garage, and then there is also a street parking, and there is a large redwood tree here in the front yard. So this will have very much a residential feel on the Tyndall side because you'll see an entrance and a garage and, you know, again, a very common residential appearance. As you come back around to the alley side, where we have two garages, our challenge again was we didn't want it to look like an apartment building on the back, so uh, way you'll see on the renderings how we've designed this to give, keep a residential feel on the alley side, as well as providing some landscaping on either sides of the driveways and uh, introducing some, uh, I believe we had a tree planned in this spot on our landscape plan. So the middle unit has a detached garage. It's not a detached structure, but it's detached from the unit itself. And the back unit, actually, its living space straddles above the garage of the middle unit. So the, the, it's not like a row houses. Some of the other projects you've seen in town, they look like a series of buildings all next to each other. So this is designed to look as one complete building and yet create the the sense again of uh, a resident a residential project so skipping past these we're going to show you some renderings instead i want to skip past those so here you can see again is the front unit living room dining room kitchen with garage the middle unit is a big open floor plan with kitchen dining living each unit has a half bath each unit has laundry how many, how many bedrooms? Because I can't, I can't really. The, the front unit, <clears throat> all of the downstairs is living space. Oh, I didn't get, I didn't, you didn't, I didn't get, get this? I didn't get a packet. You didn't go pick yeah. it up? Oh. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I picked up the packet a week oh, ago yeah. on what was supposed to be. Yeah. So and I returned it. So, Jerry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip to the upper floor plan because that's where the bedrooms are. Mm -hmm. 
Well, no, okay. I'll be able to catch up in a minute. Okay. Right there. Yeah. Three, three so I just can't read it. The the front unit has three bedrooms and two baths. So we have a master suite, two children's room with a hall bath. Okay, I got it. The middle unit is only a two bedroom unit, both with a private bath, one with a slightly larger bedroom. So it could be, you know, a parent's room and a child's room. And the back unit then has a larger master suite. It has the largest square footage of the three units because it does straddle the garage of the second unit. So that actually is a very uh, nice size master suite with walk-in closet and again, two children's rooms. So we've laid this out so the, again, a lot of the emphasis is facing Tyndall and facing the alleyway. And at this point, Les, you want to call up the, rend the grayscale renderings. There we go. And there's the grayscale right there. Okay. And About one, two, three, or four. Just pull up one. That'll work. We're going to walk you through these. So on the, this would be considered the backyard of the units. One side has the entrances are facing the north, and we put the, the quote, backyards on the south side to get more sunlight. And we've left the roof here uninterrupted or unbroken on purpose so that solar panels could be placed along this roof plane. And we're using a lighter reflective paint so we can bounce a little bit of light into the alley that's between the two units. And what you'll see is at the lower level, we've kind of created a base to this with a horizontal effect. And let's, let's go to the next one. Yeah, those will be individual yards on that side. Now, on the opposite side, which would be the entrances to the units, two of the units. This is the middle unit two, and this is the back unit three, which um, accesses from the alley. And there's a pathway that leads all along this side of the building. What we've done architecturally is we've used horizontal redwood siding to signify what is the front of these units. So each of these has a covered porch and has horizontal siding, whereas the garages and this lower bay these are all done with flat roofs because we wanted to, again, create a horizontal theme and a vertical themes <coughs> to play with each other. So let's go to the next one. And this should be facing Tyndall, I believe. Oh, no, this the is the alley. I can, you want me to no, that's okay. Yeah. This is fine. As you can see from the alley side, we have, again, uh, all three elements. We have the lower level with the horizontal plane. We have the vertical element with the horizontal siding. And then you can see how the stucco kind of wraps around uh, to tie to tie all the building together. And we'll go to the next one. And this one's from Tyndall. So again, here you have the entrance with a covered roof, the horizontal siding, the garage again with the different colored stucco and the horizontal bands to create, again, some horizontal theme because the building is otherwise one big box. And as you come down the backyard, these dashed lines just help you to see where the units stop and start. There will be no defining features, certainly not red striped lines on the building. There'll be fences. <laughs> the fences will separate the yards. Let's move on to the, some color renderings. We, so I apologize we didn't get these to you sooner. But we've been working with the colored renderings, playing with different materials and color. And again, this is the entrances on the public pathway side of the building. So again, these, you see the horizontal siding and redwood kind of defines the front of the units. Yeah, they probably can't see your pointer, so I'm going to move them. Oh, move they can't. Okay. okay. This is for the, this is for uh, yeah the we can see oh, we can see it a little further. Okay. Oh, okay so so again not the green light not the green light oh see I should be using a, so Sean this is absolutely useless to me thank you <laughs> for the audience you should do it I'll mimic you there you go so anyways as you can see the theme is we've tried to create uh, an obvious entrance and draw to to the public so they can see oh here's a porch and front entry doors and the redwood siding signifying the front of each unit. So we can click to the next one. Um, you have to, to actually close it and open yeah, it. Yeah, there we go. And this is more from Tyndall. 
And of course, these units are so close <coughs> together that you really won't see these side yards from the street. And even if you walk down the public access, you'll be looking up at the building. So uh, very little of the standing metal seam roof is going to be visible. <coughs> we're thinking at this point of just doing it with comp shingle because the, we're starting to realize that it stands out a little awkward having just one element of standing metal seam. Are you, are you saying you won't be able to see this from the alleyway? Well, this is from Tyndall. This is the view you will Tyndall see. Tyndall, rather, right? right. Yeah. This How about is the, from the alleyway the other way? Um, we can switch around. Let's go to the next one, Les. We'll go all the way around the building. I think the alley is 16 feet wide, so if you're looking head on, the answer is you actually won't be able to see And now this is also and still from Tyndall. Yeah. This is still from Tyndall, and there's mm -hmm. that large redwood tree will be in front of the structure. All right. And then as we move around the sides of the building, okay. these again are where the backyards will be. And then we come around, and now we're coming around from the alley corner. Again, you'll see the side yards, and then you see the two garages, and then finally, yeah. So that's two or three different roof materials? If you we, at the moment, it's, it's, if you count the flat roofs, it's three. But again, you won't see the material on the flat roofs. Those are, again, to create a horizontal band mm -hmm. to break up the height and mass of the two-story walls. And then what we've done is we've introduced the, the two-story element with the, with the siding above the garage to, again, break up the mass. So you have a, a lower bunker kind of where the garage is. You then have the uh, two-story element with the siding. And then you have the main mass of the building, which is the cream-colored stucco. And we go one more. We'll come back around to the other view from the alley. And this is where the public walkway would lead you back to the entrances. So what we've tried to do is with the, we're going to go back to a comp shingle on the entire structure because the, we thought this a little bit of standing metal seam roof would add some interest, but it actually it's distracting feel to the to the structure. So we're thinking of integrating it all to be comp shingle on the roof, and that way uh, it introduced one less element is being on the building. Yeah, we can take one more. And this will bring you back all full circle now to the entrance side, the public side of the three units. So as you can see, it's not designed so much to look like three separate buildings. The whole building has as an integrated theme of a mixture of single-story elements, two-story elements, vertical elements, and distinguishable entries. Um, the other items inside each of the units, we do have a, a 96 square foot storage unit that we actually did the size for a bicycle. So it meets the actual physical dimensions of, of a locker for a bicycle. So those are integrated into each of the floor plans. Okay. Uh, you want the floor sure, plan let's go back to that and we'll need to, that's the first. Oh, that's I, can, I can click us back one. Okay. There we go. So actually where those are located is underneath the stair landings of two of the units is where the, the bike locker, you can just roll your bike right in. And the third unit, it's a little harder to see. The, it's between the two garages. And one of those is an entrance for a bicycle, but above them are two smaller storage lockers. Those two particular units get a little extra bonus storage area above the bicycle locker. Uh, mechanical units are all integrated, are all in the attic, horizontal units. You won't see those. AC units are placed outside on the private yard sides, so each individual unit can contend with their own AC unit noise. Um, the pub, as far as trash enclosures, I'm going to take us back to the site plan, and we have three different locations. Each unit has their own. So yeah, the one on Tyndall will have a, will be integrated in with the fence between the building and the property line. And those can then be rolled up to the curbside for pickup. And then on the back unit, there is an enclosed area that also has all our utilities, uh, electric panels, um, 
not yeah the electric meters and gas and also there is a uh, spot there for the yard waste the, the gas isn't there the gas is the gas isn't there I'm sorry yeah that's just the electrical and the uh, one of the units trash recycling and a yard waste container for the property figuring we only need one for the uh, minimal amount of landscaping to be maintained well, and there's common electric too. Yeah. This, com this common stuff is going to be there that basically it's a utility electric. yard for the for the development and then there's another one between the two driveways and that is for unit two so and we also have a spot for a bicycle uh, lock up it's a type B Class two, I think. A I class think two. A, a locker is a class one bike unit, and a, a basically something you can lock the front, a wheel, and the frame to is a class two. Right. And that, that would be class two inside or class ones. Right, and we've located that the up against a structure which is on the adjoining unit, and what we're hoping to do along there is to plant a trellis so that we can grow a vine to hide that other building. And then put the uh, bicycle uh, lock uh, type two in front of it. So there's a place to, uh, again, for public coming to visit to lock up their bike. So, Walter, did you say that the trash bins for the two back units are just wheeled out into that alley there by the Yeah, and we've actually left a spot because we're landscaping between the driveways. Ah. And if you notice right on the alley, there are a couple of pads of concrete where the trash cans can be rolled out the walkway and set on those pads for pickup and then be rolled back in behind the fences and gates. And uh, similarly, the other one rolls out to curbside on Tyndall. So um, I believe that kind of covers the, the big picture okay. of how we approach this. The second story, second story side windows uh, we've kept those as narrow windows, and if we want to go to one of the elevations, we can go to a grayscale or elevation. Oh. There you go. Well, yeah. Let me. Uh, these aren't really color accurate. These aren't. Yeah. Right? So we purposely did horizontal windows for egress. I mean, vertical windows for egress versus horizontal, because there are the units right across the way, and we didn't want to have big picture windows looking into the bedrooms. Uh, whereas you can see we have sliding glass doors out to the lower yard. So we, we did our best as far as privacy uh, can be done in, a, in this type of scenario. Okay, thank you. I have another question. Um, I have I've, I've, public, yeah. Do we call on the audience? This is not for participation from the audience, is it? From the public. Public? Did you two want to speak? Well, if you're going to ask, well, okay, well, if you are, you, you have to fill out a form and simple. But if you wanted to reiterate what, when you had comments about the public, if they were attending, what the process was, I think they came in after that. That's right. So, Sean. Uh, so the public is aware uh, this is a, an, an informal uh, process for the commission to provide comment on the preliminary application. Um, the Commission will provide comments regarding the architecture and the site planning. Uh, the applicant will return with a formal application and at that time uh, the Commission will review and provide a formal action and the public will also have an opportunity to provide additional comment at that time too. Okay, so hold for that. yep. it's very, it, that's the normal process, yes. Okay. okay. All right, great. Thanks. Um, okay, let's questions um, for the applicant? start with questions. Um, Alex? Start on that side. Uh, okay. Okay. Or I can go. I, I can go. Yeah. <laughs> this is just a, a small question, but I, it's an inconsistency that I want to make sure I understand which is correct. So if you look at the conceptual tentative map A1B, you show the units between the garage. You have something labeled as exclusive use for unit two. Um, but on the next page, sheet A2, at least in our packet, it's probably more appropriately getting split up between bike storage in one garage and then storage in the other garage. Um, so I just wanted to know which one's actually, or are they are they on top of each other? They're on top of each other. Ah. Yes, they are. So that okay. the, the portion on top is actually exclusive use from each side. So each get half of the upper locker. 
whereas the lower level is all to unit two for its bicycle, or okay. no, level three for its unit bicycles, three. unit three for bicycle storage. Okay, because on A1B it says exclusive use for unit Yeah, the, the attorney's having a really fun time trying to describe each of these spaces because yeah, it's all, all integrated yeah. above and okay. into each other, so. Okay. The, the, the engineers, yeah, they have to. All right, so that that's that was the question I had. Alex, I'll, I'll go. <laughs> I'm wait no. the last. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. You want me to go? Take it. Yeah. Right. So, can you flip the uh, picture to the other side? Hey, I just had one question for you. Uh, well, this is on the. Uh, I want the entryway side. Uh, if you go up to the up to the top. Uh, you're going to have to move the mouse. You gonna, you so you see the grayscale? If you click on the headers across the top, click on probably the third one over, you'll catch it. This yeah, yeah, I think if you do that one. Oh, it didn't work. Uh, <laughs> there it is. The front or the other the, side? I want to see the other side. side. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's one of ours. There we go. There, there we go. The so I noticed that there's these lights that are there. Are those going to oh. be on in the evening then? Are they on a timer of some sort, or will the units be switching them on and off? So, so these are not the exact fixtures. Okay. Um, what those are is those are the walkway lights, <coughs> um, and they will be pointed down because, yeah, I'm very conscious about light pollution, and I don't exactly. want to be having lights shining in the neighbors' windows. But there obviously is a requirement for illumination for the walkway, and that's Okay. The intent. This is not a perfect representation. No, that's fine. I just was curious what, what that was. And then the other question, are each unit going to have some sort of um, light illumination in front of their door? Yeah. Yeah, each okay. will have some can lights tucked up in that flat ceiling shining gotcha. downward instead of outward. Okay. That was my question. Sorry. <laughs> No comments? <laughs> oh, I have comments, but I've, I've oh, I don't have any questions. No, no questions. I don't have any questions. Um, does Alex I have, have comments? Any yeah. Does Alex have any, any questions? questions? Um, I guess my questions are just around. Um, it doesn't look like there's eaves over some of the doors and sliding glass doors and waterproofing and just how is that? Um, yeah, we basically are just going to be flashed and papered in you know, the typical construction techniques. Uh, we, have, we have some areas that are covered over the garage doors on some of the units. You know, architecturally, we didn't want to get it too heavy with covered porches, um, so we've tried to keep it simple. Uh, I don't know if there's really a concern, though, from a, a weather standpoint if they're installed correctly. Okay, then um, comments. Right. Start with you, Michael. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I really like the design of this. I think that you've got, I mean, it blends in well with that neighborhood and, and things. So the, the only thing that I saw, and it was not in the packet, but it's actually, if you can click on the Tyndall on the color drawings. Yeah. And I don't know if they're official, but the color of the stucco on where the garage is, it looks to me like it's different than what's above. and. It just looks really busy to me. And the same thing with the roof, which you already commented on. And that's pretty much, I mean, I know that we're early in design, so, but that was, I'm hoping that the colors will complement each other. And can I comment on that for you or sure. should take input? Well, either way, I don't care. Yeah, we, we wanted to, we do want to distinguish the main bulk of the building independently from those lower level. Uh, some of the colors didn't show up as we had hoped when we're doing these renderings because computer generation Absolutely. is always a, ch a challenge. But we do want to maintain a distinction between that horizontal lower level versus the main mass of the building. So there will be some type of two-tone color okay. used. Um, but again, for the roof, we realized it was getting too busy with the standing metal seam and we've... Yeah, and it seemed to be like the aluminum... I mean, this is really picky, so that's why... I'm, uh, but just a the color of the like the gutters and the color of the f of the window frames is different. I mean, that's what I when I look at this building, that's the only thing that jumps out at me. Everything else, I mean, I like the bike parking, I like the landscaping, I like everything about it. It just these colors just don't seem to. And then you're right. Until we see the, I was going to wait till we're going to get the um, material pad, material pad, and see all that. And I think that's where it'll be easier. So that'll okay, be really well, it's, important. It's good to hear that because these are the, we're actually canvassing all kinds of people about color because it seems to be a very a big topic with realtors, property Absolutely. purchasers, and planning commissioners. So we... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So that's my only comments. Otherwise, great <coughs> job. I really like this. Yeah, I, uh, I also think that the, um, when you look at the floor plan, it's unbelievable you were able to fit all that in so nicely. And every room seems to have, uh, you know, good quality uh, you know, views and light and windows, uh, even the bathroom. So um, uh, I'm very impressed with that. Uh, in three dimensions, however, I have a few thoughts, and you don't have to, you know, I'm just going to go through them. Uh, I'm sure you had reasons for um, a lot of the decisions, but I'll give you my initial thoughts on it. Um, I just feel like there's no... Uh, consistent style uh, on the project. The flat roofs are um, sort of a modern language. Um, and then the hip roofs, uh, um, you know, they can be worked into anything really, but um, there's just kind of a inconsistency on the top and the bottom because of the change of roof style. And of course, uh, I'm glad to hear you're um, just keeping the um, one shingle roof um, finish uh, as opposed to um, to two because then that just adds a little more inconsistency. <laughs> uh, so um, I think Phoebe had mentioned in her letter and I read that and um, I agreed with her that we kind of don't have a, uh, a style in mind and it, it doesn't uh, uh, have a... Um, uh, any character, the, the building. It seems like, um, you know, we're adding roofs here and there, but there's no, not a lot of logic to where things go other than for functional reasons, not, not for aesthetic reasons. Um, and so um, I think the, the one view that matters the most is the one that's, uh, you know, facing the street. Uh, yeah. And, and for that one, what I don't like about, what are we looking at here? This is this a sample is of a house. Oh, okay. <laughs> on Campbell. That, that oh. On Campbell. Oh, okay. On Campbell. Now, let's look at the view from, Okay. I believe it's two. So, yeah, front, front elevation. What I didn't like about that is... Uh, uh, it, that's the front that, that's where the, the front. where the tree goes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I I felt like the uh, this horizontal uh, line that you're creating. I like it. I think it's the the top and bottom floors have to be uh, separated like that. It's it's nice to to bring that line along, but maybe a change of material from top and bottom also would be helpful. Uh, to where we uh, do uh, continue that uh, that band across by you know and, and it could doesn't have to be an actual roof coming out maybe it's a, it's just a uh, indentation or a change of material at that line um, so um, I thought that would help that elevation also the rear elevation where the that uh, Tower is where the the garage is. Can you go back to that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the rear elevation. Yeah, that that tower uh, I think suffers a little bit from too too much too too skinny and tall, and not enough articulation between the window and the garage door. And it would be uh, nice to. Uh, carry that line, th that um, horizontal line uh, that you have over the garage uh, around the building there somehow, not necessarily in three dimensions, but um, some change of material. Um, so that's another uh, comment there. The, the windows that you have, the vertical windows, I, can, I see your reasoning for it. I, they do feel a little tall and um, narrow again. It's, it's so vertical. Um, um, and I wonder if they have to be so tall. Uh, you know, one thought I had, and I don't know what industry standards are, but the height of the ground floor um, on the interior is the same as the one on the upper floor. And it seems to me like bedrooms can afford to have, you know, a foot less, maybe go down to eight, eight and a half. But then the living room can enjoy a higher ceiling height. And so I wonder um, if this 
if that's something that you would consider to give more height to the lower level and then uh, lower the upper level, and then that would help with the windows. Because if you, I assume you're trying to meet egress, uh -huh. and that's why you have to make those w windows so tall because you're starting at a higher uh, head headroom. So, um, y you know, that's another thought to to just add a little more height to the lower level. Um, and then you mentioned that you are the living uh, or the outdoor living spaces in, on the south side, which I think is great. And I wondered why we don't uh, push the building further towards the north side. Uh, I, I see that there's some indentation in the building uh, on the lower level, uh, you know, where the entrance to the, um, the middle section is. I wondered why we, we don't even give more um, yard to the um, to these buildings by pushing closer to the um, to the north side, um, and um, you know maybe they can have even more use of the su southern exposure there. So, um, would, would you could, oh, oh, would it be appropriate for me to respond to just a few of these for the commissioners to understand? Um, we can't raise the ceiling height at the lower level because we don't have enough room for the staircases to work. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons the floor plan works so well inside mm -hmm. is that we, by keeping the ceiling at nine feet, I, I don't have room to add another tread or two to the length of the staircases. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is our preference to keep at least the nine foot ceiling upstairs because we don't want it as you go upstairs to feel that it's squat once you've mm -hmm. been downstairs. And yes, the height of the windows is based on the egress sill height and wanting to maintain an eight-foot door or header height throughout the upstairs of the unit. As far as moving the building over, we're pressed against setbacks. We don't have, I can't move the building to create more yard. So uh, what we've done is we've tried to make the best use of the physical dimensions of the site as we could. Uh, architecturally, um, I, I'm concerned about making it look like a box on a box. If I do too much horizontal bands, then it looks like there's a box sitting on top of a box. I, I, when having, it's nice to create a little bit of verticality to these units. Mm -hmm. uh, I might be able to expand the band over the trash enclosure area on the alleyway side mm -hmm. so that we get kind of that floating cantilevered roof over the mm -hmm. trash enclosure. That would break up the two-story wall element of, this, of the lighter stucco. But uh, part of the character of that two-story element on all of the areas with the redwood siding, I'd like to try and keep that consistent if we can, uh, because that keeps it all, again, from looking like stacked boxes. Mm -hmm. So as far as the style, I did flash up temporarily the property on Campbell. This style of combination of flat roofs and hip roofs and stucco and siding is actually very common in Los Altos. This is an example of one that we have done that's been built on Campbell. I could go around Los Altos and show you another 20 homes that intermix these materials and horizontal and flat roofs and hip roofs because this is a very common contemporary style that is actually popular with a lot of our clients and we have done probably half a dozen of them and I've seen another dozen around town. So it's, it is a style, it is a theme that is consistent and we've carried it around our building so it doesn't look like we just have a front or a back, but we've really tried to integrate it around all well, I, I normally, I would go Alaska <laughs> in the chair, but, but the difference between this building and the, your building are the pitched roofs on the first floor. And, and to me, that's a major Mm -hmm. Era, mm -hmm. because it, it it just I mean look at the look at how the articulation on this building and then go back to your building. All right, mm -hmm. All right. So the flat roof is across the front here on this one. I go back go back to your building and, mm -hmm. and just and I'll let you guys. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're working on it. One comment I had to get in when you said <laughs> right. what you said. Yeah, we, we have no a, comparison. Right. See these are these are these are horizontal the, and, and they're more like bands than they are roofs. Right. And, and that was intentional because the problem we have with these lower level units, if I start putting hip roofs on them, it looks really bad yeah. because they're all different depths, they're all different widths. And what you end up is a lot of bunch of little hats on top of each of these single story roofs and it blocks the mass of the main portion of the building. So really introducing hip roofs on these, it's gonna get very cluttered with a bunch of different 
because each one's a different depth. And the way hip grooves work, their height of them is relative to the physical dimension that's being covered. So we looked at that, and you end up with a whole bunch of silly little roofs on top of each one, and then there is no consistency. But you don't have architecture. to. Do, I'm, I don't, I'm not an architect, so I'll leave it to you. But. That's why I'm, I'm bringing this up, because we've spent a lot of time working on that architecturally. And if I start putting little shed roofs and hip roofs, it really clutters up the architecture. Right now, it's very clean. And that's the contemporary style that we're shooting for. Uh, let me just add one thing um, on that elevation. The um, I think there was a, like a, maybe a foot, one foot six inches uh, or one foot five inches, and then a two foot three inch that pop out on that um, the middle unit and then the kitchen on the yeah they're different the, depths yeah. the pop outs and I, I I and I see that the pop outs is then um, has it. Roof uh, and a higher plate also, uh, so you're basically kind of using that to articulate the building. But I feel like um, it's so little. I mean, you uh, you when you have a pop out, it would have been nice to have a little um, you know deeper um, or bigger difference in in the surface change uh it would just make um especially since you're changing materials uh on that elevation it would make it a little more effective if you were to pop it out a few inches <coughs> more and when i asked about the setbacks um i assume the setback where the garage is uh the line where the garage is that's where the uh ground floor setback is mm -hmm. and there is that space that's not used up, um, right? Am I right? Yeah, you have the the yard second setbacks. story setbacks. We can't move the second story walls. Right, but on the ground floor you can. So what you're suffering from is that the ground floor and the second floor are matching, um, you know, it's a vertical wall. But if you were to um, widen the, um, the ground floor, and I know you have limitations with floor area, but it would help, uh, you know, give you that, uh, allow you to have a, a, a roof we, over that ground floor well, before yeah, you meet the second. Again, we have, we have very limited very flexibility limited. with the size of these rooms. You have to understand the width of these buildings are very right. narrow. And any square footage that I shift downstairs, because everything's based on they coverage, to, not yeah. square footage. I understand. So uh, e manipulating walls in or out changes the whole design of the structure right, right. and what we have now is is a, a very well thought out and crafted design that works with the setbacks with all the zoning rules and creates a, a very workable floor plans mm -hmm. so to try to manipulate that uh is very difficult to do because well, it's a study session, right? Sure. Um. Well, that's that's why, I, and that's why I'm bringing it up is that it's, it's you know we've spent a, we've spent months trying to make all of these pieces fit, and right. it's it's just you, we can't. It's very difficult to alter something that already works for something that's going to be uh, much more difficult okay. that may not and work. What I'd be concerned about is the next building. Right. That's that, that, because you're encroaching I, into I, their space, yeah, and, and and you've got to leave some opening so that sunlight and things can come through true, to that. Yeah. Sally. Yeah. yeah. So um, can we go back to the color uh, renderings? Uh, the, I'd like to see the um, front door side, the two. The longer the, side. Yeah. The longer yeah. side. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and that's consider. Okay, that's good. Um, so I'm not an architect, mm. but I'll just give you a couple comments, and this is. This particular comment is not necessarily the direction you want to go because it will increase the cost, but I think that actually if you went with the entire roof being standing metal seam rather than the composite, then you're going to achieve your more modern contemporary look um, and it will tie in with the horizontals um, better. I know that's the more expensive way to go, but I think if your horizontal bands are achieved with you know, some metal material similar to your standing metal seam roofs, then it actually begins to look contemporary like the example on Campbell you've shown us. The diagram of the plane. We just want to demonstrate something for you. Okay. Yes, because this is something that we also came to some... Uh, uh, you have to go back out. No, it's not PowerPoint. It's back... Do you want the roof plane? What do you want? No, the, the projection that you had for the person, the visual of where a person standing looking up at this street. My picture? Yes. 
that is. And then, can I ask a question of, of David, oh, John? Okay. So, so, will they be providing as part of their plans the um, how it will look in the neighborhood? I don't yeah. know what that's called. Yeah. You know, the street the profile. Thing. Street profile. Yeah. Yes, that would be part of the formal yeah. application. Yeah. Yeah. So, the the an answer to Sally's question is: We thought. Oh, here, it is. Oh, here we go. This uh, is the I line. Think. No, 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 it's not. It. All right, she didn't. Okay. There's a line of sight at a certain point mm -hmm. where because of the height of that second story roof and the angle of it, you won't see any of the standard metal seam roof, certainly down the whole length of the building mm -hmm. because it's not visible from anywhere. And even from yeah. street side looking up and the <laughs> angle of the pitch of the roof, I don't know what I mean. yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, it really I wouldn't. Yeah, first. so we're looking at it in isolation, and your point is yeah. a good one. Yeah. So. Yeah, good point. Okay. Um, then the other thing I was going to say, if you go back to the one we were on, or not go back to it, I think I know what it looks like. Um, your your doors get lost in the siding, at least is how you have them rendered right now. I, I really could stand to see a door that makes some sort of statement, sure, um, rather than a red sided door on a red long red sided wall. So all three doors just blend into the you, yeah, you, beautiful yeah. siding. Are you talking about the, the front door? The really? Doors right, oh, actually, that one you just had. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's really Tyndall that I think we sh that a lot of the this is the backside. Yeah, no, this is the two front doors, and then there's the to the okay. other yeah, one the that shows Tyndall. All three doors are no, this is the wrong. This is the back. You got to close it and open it. There you are. No, he's probably, he actually should it. be able to t click yeah. the top. But yeah, I know. But I mean, again, it may just be this uh, rendering. But if you go to the there, the so there's two of them, no, and then no, that's the back. No. That's the back. Spin the building. Spin but you can't around. see those doors other than when you when walk When I, as a homeowner, want my door to make a statement. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So Next I'm just, I, you there. know, I agree you can't see that you can see the Tyndall one. Yeah, yeah that I, one. Yeah. yeah. You can't see that door. Yeah, yeah we, so. We, certainly the type of door is, is, in fact, it would be, yeah, we, we have to look at what type right. of door would be yeah. appropriate. I'm talking about to make this personal for the homeowner. You're right that those two on the alleyway are not going to be visible, but, yeah. but you know, this, everyone's front door should speak, you know, this is my Well, door. and we'd want each of the units to have a comparable quality front door, yes, so exactly. we don't want to down, downgrade the, alley the side people. units. We'll certainly yeah. make sure they yeah. have a similar. Yeah, but you could pick up on, you know, the, the metal theme, or you could do something to actually make it pop a little mm -hmm. bit and yeah, very not good. be busy. Totally. Okay, that's me. Um, so I turn your mic on first. <laughs> <laughs> turn on my mic. Um, and I agree um, yeah. with Bahi in that um, I know you've done a lot of work and try to fit a lot in, um, but I think we have to be equally concerned about the exterior as the interior. Um, and for me, it's just. This is night and day different from the representation of that other home on Campbell that, that you're referring to, which has much more articulation, feels a lot more interesting. It's got a lot more kind of setbacks on the upper floors. Um, and, you know, um, I'm really struggling with um, kind of with the design here. Um, so... Uh, you know, I, I don't really have much more than that, other than just kind of an overarching, um, um, an overarching kind of feeling that that it, you know, it needs some more articulation because um, there's just a lot of planes. <laughs> um, I, I think the other thing for me, <clears throat> and I don't know how this, um, you know. I think having this garbage section for unit number two way, I, I can deal, you know, I, I think I'm fine with the parking not being attached, but having to go all the way out there um, to, to, you know, get rid of garbage, I don't know if there's a way to incorporate that so, some other way so it's more attached to, to the unit. That's the way so. it is in all the other buildings in the neighborhood. It's in, it's in the back of the most people carry it out to a big dumpster in the alley. Yeah. We're about the only units that are providing something that is integrated and screened in as well as this is. Most of them are pretty bad. Yeah, when I went by there, because the, the, I, I drove down the alley, it had, like, trash cans everywhere. <laughs> it's yeah. it's like, uh, what's the right thing? Yeah. Um, and yeah. then just, you know, the 
practicality of getting the garbage cans on unit one through landscaping out to the mm -hmm. concrete curb, obviously, um, and whether it would make sense to just include the enclosure to screen the AC unit hmm. on that unit as well. Only um, time something that's a noise issue, if you screen them too much, they need usually... Or landscaping or whatever it is. Landscaping but, would work there, yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Good. That's all I got. All right. Well, I got a few things. Um, so, um, I I I, I, re I realize the limitation in the in the lot in the rectangular lot, and that's that makes it very 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 difficult to come up with um, uh, a. You're limited on what you can do for designs. I get that, huh. but in, in in my opinion, you favored functionality, and I'm hearing by your comments because every time we say something, your comments is well, you can't do that because of this, that, or the next thing. Mm -hmm. So you favored functionality to me to design. So I look at this and I go, well, I wouldn't move here. <clears throat> it's it looks very bland. I'm, I'm just telling where it is. And and maybe it's the colors. I, I know I, I'm, I do a lot of offices and apartments, and I know that the last four years the color has the color is gray, internal and out. That's the color. But to me, this doesn't. I would take some of the windows and pop them out or in. Do something to to, to take away the rectangle, mm. straight look. I mean, you if you can't do anything. With the oh. vertical roof, which I don't know why you couldn't, oh. then could you do something with the windows? Could you pop them out mm -hmm. to, so, that it, so that it doesn't look like one straight line on yeah. each side? Yeah. And now you're going to tell me you can't because well, it's not it, functional. Well, no, it's not a matter of that. It's, it's putting the wrong architecture on the building because what we're doing here is very contemporary, very clean. I could show you hundreds yeah, and hundreds. To me, it's almost, it's too clean. Yeah, well, it's... That's the point. Well, yeah, so maybe what I, maybe would be helpful is, um, is that if I could show the commissioners basically a slide presentation of contemporary and modern architecture, because what we're doing is consistent, it's consistent with itself. The theme of the building and the elements that we're using are used all over in contemporary and modern architecture, so if we start popping out elements, that's what you see on traditional homes. And if I do box windows or I start doing, they, they look contrived when what we're trying to do is have these three components to the building. We have the main mass, we have the lower base elements which are horizontal, and we have the few elements which are vertical. We're taking three very classic pieces of architecture and integrating them together now, what we have done is we've put different materials on each of them. Maybe that's what we shouldn't do. Maybe that's why it's becoming too of a con much of a contrast for you. If I put the whole thing with horizontal redwood siding, then it all just runs together, and we aren't emphasizing, again, the, the, the just well, Then it looks like one building rather than three units. And I don't think we want that. I don't think you want that well, either. No, it doesn't. We purposely made it so it doesn't look like three units. What we have is we have three components of architecture, which vertical elements, horizontal elements, and they're holding and mass screening the massing of the main structure, which is controlled by setbacks. So, um, I mean, those are some of the most classic elements of architecture. So I, I, I'm struggling to see. I mean, I, I can. I can simp I can take away some of the uh, art. What's making the building work architecturally is the fact that we do have these components in just position to each other to create a little tension and drama, which is what the modern architecture theme does. I can water it down. I can try to throw canopy roofs on it. But what that does is it takes it away from its own integrity. It no longer has any integrity as a contemporary building. It starts becoming something else. So I mean, I, it's I all, can, that's over my head. I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, okay. I mean, what, it's over my okay, maybe. But one thing you might want to um, visit is the city council conversation because we're just 
an advisory body. Mm -hmm. The city council is going to see the same things we do, and mm -hmm. they're going to make comments. And I know the building at Miramani and I want to say B Street that hasn't been built. We looked at it. We made essentially similar comments. The builder didn't change anything. Mm -hmm. They went to city council, and city council set up basically the same things, mm -hmm. okay. and, and and did not want to go forward with that building. So, so I, I just want to make I, I don't want no, you to go through this we're process. Here, we're and here, then, I understand, and I'm and I'm trying to figure out what things I can do after hearing this that I can. I mean, I can I can tone it down by m less materials on the building, uh, and then you're not seeing such strong elements. But uh, certain things are contrived if I start putting them on the building. And then, then the building has no integrity. No, I understand what you're saying. I'm, again, trying to help. I understand. Yeah. So this, so. Uh, as an example, so I'm, st I'm still a bad here. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> this, is, this is the Tyndall face. OK, so yeah. I'm, so I'm going to do what I call a drive-by. Mm -hmm. right? I drive by here. I look at the building that I just passed, and I look at the next one. I don't even see this one. Huh. It's, it just doesn't pop. For instance, if there's no, the next one has an, a front has an architectural design that immediately catches your attention. Immediately. This doesn't, this doesn't catch my attention. Mm. Now, will they sell? And it's, a, it's a phenomenal location. There's no question about that. So that's good for you. Mm. But, but from an architectural standpoint, does this catch my eye? It, it, it doesn't. It just doesn't. For me. Mm. So... But I'm not an architect, and you're talking about contemporary this, contemporary that. That's over my head. I don't. I only know what I like. Mm -hmm. This, it's not my job to like it or not like it. I'm just. I don't know. I mean, you, functionally, it's great. The the three bedrooms. I mean, perfect. You know, the bicycle. Everything's everything's yeah. So it's great. One thing about this in particular is you're going to have that gigantic redwood tree. So to to yes, me, right this actually That's yeah, true. right in front. Right. To me, this looks a little bit Tahoe-ish. I mean, yeah, I I buy the modern contemporary, and I was on design review when their Campbell House came forward and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So, um, so I can do that. But when you think of this in the settings um, with the tree and everything. It, Again, I, I still going to push for a door, but I mean, I think it could be very attractive. Yeah, right, right, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the landscaping right. will. I took the tree yeah. out. I forgot right. the tree was there. That's right. I mean, it right. it can, you know, do that. Uh, so I don't know. I yeah. can. That tree may not always be there, too. Well, well, it's pretty big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna. <laughs> well, that's why I like to see this house with the other two structures next to it, yeah. just that to see how it kind of because it's hard. I mean. I, I appreciate With the tree, it. that would be nice. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that's right. Nice. The architectural thing I'm talking about may be moot. Mm -hmm. It might be because you're not going to be seeing. You're not going to be seeing. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, well, again, depends exactly where it is. But you're, it's, it, this, you know. So anyway, it'll make a big difference to mm -hmm. to see that. I think. Well, well, I just want to well, add one thing because you said, um, you know, that with modern architecture, and I agree, you can't add too many bells and whistles and still call this modern. Architecture. I, I really didn't see this as a modern architecture. All I saw was uh, uh, that horizontal roof uh, kind of going around. That's, um, that, that is a modern language. But there are different ways to carry that uh, through and make this a um, more appealing building. You know, it doesn't have to um, be a lot of bells and whistles. Uh, like I said, it could be some sort of uh, continuation of that line without... Uh, breaking up the volume or continuing the roof. It could be um, uh, some indentation or change in the uh, material from top and bottom. Uh, I think that would help it. Uh, it could be um, some sort of awning or trellis uh, of some, you know, it could be a metal, very uh, contemporary looking thing, but that could also add some three dimensions. Um, so I, I don't necessarily see that because this is modern, it can have uh, more articulation. Mm -hmm. I, I do also want to uh, repeat, I don't like when you have a change of material uh, like that, the two volumes, the roof, everything is changing, but you only have a, looks like a 10 inch, 12, 12 inch difference in uh, you know the two uh, surfaces. I would. I would like you to uh, push it out some more. I know the plans are all set in stone, but uh, if there is a way to um, to um, distinguish between if a volume is really taller and has a different materials, it should really 
be, um, you know, a little more distinguished from the surface right next to it. Uh, I see the garage and, and the actual the um, siding are the same surface. So it's sort of accidental that it just that line ends, the, the, the uh, wood ends and the stucco begins, but there's no indentation in the building. Um, so um, I think those would help make it a little, uh, those changes would make it a little more um, yeah. appealing. <laughs> right, anything else? Yeah. So. Okay, so, <coughs> Alex? Yeah, that's, um, can we go back to that elevation? The elevation or the, um, the, the rendering? The of the lawn side or the Tyndall? The Tyndall front? entrance. The Tyndall entrance. Oh, sorry. Those are all the... And we also, when you come back, it would be nice to see the fences um, mm -hmm. mocked up because that'll make a difference to how it looks. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's one of them. I can give you the other one. I'm also looking forward to see the uh, material board. Yeah. I think the material. So, I mean, that's why it's hard to. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's, it's hard, hard to tell. I'm, I'm sure that it's better than I think. So just yes. to the left of this door, that would be the staircase going up. Yes. And so would there be maybe actually making that a bigger window going all the way down and breaking up the mass between between the two there? Um, I'd have to look at the height of uh, you know, how much it exposes the handrail and of the stairs as we're going up. I just have to check that and see. Um, so, I mean, just something to really... Yeah, we, we had talked... The talk halfway up. Um, yeah. Halfway up the first wall. That's where the landing is. All right. So if we brought it down lower... Uh, we had looked at bringing it down lower. It's already about an eight-foot-tall window. It's a big expanse of glass already. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that's something we could look at versus... Um, it would be more than one window. <coughs> yeah. We could, we could break it up into two. Again, whether that starts to look busy or, you know, that's all... Some people like it, some don't, but we could break it up into a series of windows, uh, even three, to create a different effect on that area. Yeah, and maybe some other window on the um, on that plain wall that's there on the stucco face. The stucco face. Yeah, uh, but I mean, you could do something on top. Or, horizontal window up in there. It's, yeah. Um, I, I just think it's really a uh, little stark there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't. Should I close the meeting? <laughs> That's it? That's it. Okay. Study session is closed. Thank you. Okay. okay.